Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the sectional area curve. We're going to talk about what, what can we use it for? And also, how can we get it? The sectional area curve, when the ship main dimensions, which are length, breadth, draft, and the displacement are known, the displacement's longitudinal distribution can be determined by using the sectional area curve. The longitudinal positions on this curve represent sectional area values. The integrated area under the sectional area curve gives the displaced volume, which, are, which is the displacement of the ship. And the center of this area gives the center of volume of the ship, which is the longitudinal center of buoyancy. The curve is extended over the ship's length, which is divided into three lengths. The entrance length, the length of run, and the length of the parallel middle body. The parallel middle body, or the parallel body length, corresponds to the part of the ship's length for which we have constant sectional area. So here is the run, the length of the run, and here is the length of the entrance, and here is the parallel middle body. The length of the entrance is at the bow, and the run is at stern, and the parallel middle body at the middle. As I mentioned before, the integral of the sectional area curve gives the volume of displacement needed to calculate the buoyancy. And the buoyancy equals rho multiplied by the g, which is the gravity, and multiplied by the volume. The volume here is the volume displaced which is, can be calculated by the area under this curve. To get the area under this curve, we need to make sure this curve is closed here. Close curve. And then we go to the command window and just type area, hit enter. The area here is 14952. This is the volume, the displaced volume. So I got the volume. And I also have the gravity, which is 9.81. The rho, which is the density, depends on the fluid itself. The rho here depends if it's fresh water, so it's going to be one ton per cubic meter, or at the ocean, which is 1.025 ton per cubic meter. And once I calculate the buoyancy, according to Archimedes, the buoyancy equals to the displacement of the ship. So, that means I have the displacement of the ship. And also, the centroid of this area, I can calculate this by select the curve, which is the closed curve. Go to Analyze, Mass Properties, and then Area Centroid. Here, I have my centroid of, the, of this area. I can now go there to know the position of the center of buoyancy. So now I have the LCB, which is the longitudinal center of buoyancy, and I also have the displacement or the volume. To make sure about this, here I have my ship. When I calculated this, uh, the stability of this ship by selecting the surface, go to Analyze, 
mass properties, and I select hydrostatics. The result of this hydrostatics is here. The volume displaced equals 14930, which is nearly equal to the volume or the area under the curve. And also the longitudinal center of buoyancy here is 69. And here the center of buoyancy is 70 meters. So it's nearly equal to each other. The sectional area curve I can determine includes the determination of the prismatic coefficient, which is the CP, the longitudinal center of buoyancy, the location of the maximum sectional area curve, the length of the parallel section of constant sectional area, and the midship section area, which is the CM. To get the coefficient of the CM, I calculated the area of these two stations. The area of the midship section, it, it is the most important. So I can determine the maximum value of, the, of this curve. And the maximum value equals to the area of the midship which is 159.77, here, 159.77. And at the R5 station, here, it's 128, which is the area of this station. To get the coefficient of the midship section, I have the area of the midship, and then I'll divide this by the breadth multiplied by the draft. That's all about the sectional area curve. More note we need to know about. As the prismatic coefficient decreases to roughly 0.65, the parallel middle body vanishes. So, if we focus here, as long as we are, our CP is greater than 0.65, we have a parallel middle body. But if it's less than 0.65, there will not be a parallel middle body. In terms of resistance for fast ships, it is beneficial to move the midship area towards the aft thus increasing the length of the entrance of the sectional area curve. The fluid number represents the velocity for me. So as the fluid number increases, which means the velocity increases, the length of entrance increases because the length between perpendicular is constant. So as long as the velocity increases, the length of entrance increases. If you have any comments, please let me know. I made sure to speak loudly and slowly so everyone can understand me. So please, if you do not understand a word I said, turn the captions on so you can so you can read it. This ship I designed using Series 60, and I hope sooner or later I upload its videos. I hope you guys understood every single word I said in this tutorial, and see you later. Fearless. Fearless. Fearless.